once so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the Good evening, everybody, and thank you so much for being with us here for our production of League of Legends. Tonight, uh, we do have a big League of Legends game going on this evening, so very much looking forward to that. We're going to be playing Wayne State, so we are going to be playing them in just a few minutes. We're in the queue right now, so, oh, there we go, much better. All right, so I am Caleb Colquitt, your head, your head coach and your host for this evening. Sorry about that. If my tongue is a little tangled, I apologize for that. But what's been going on here earlier today is I just came out of a class and I just taught for about two and a half fish hours, something like that on, uh, oh no, one and a half because I had someone else teaching the first half. But anyway, so I just came out of teaching a class. So just bear with me on that one. Still trying to get my bearings straight, but we got Wayne State tonight, number three in the conference. We're looking to get our first win after losing the first game. So let's go ahead and introduce the team. We'll go ahead and look over here. All by his lonesome, all the way over there is Raptor Claw, Ethan, who is just uh, by himself over there, which we don't normally see in League of Legends matches because there's five of them. That's because the captain, Daniel Wentz, is actually going to be at home. This is not technically an official NACE match, and so because of that, we don't have the in-house rule, uh, which means that Daniel will be joining us, but he'll be joining us via remote. You know, hardworking guy, law student, works for Mobile, and because of that, we got Raptor Claw over here on one side of the arena, and if you go to the other side, you'll meet the rest of the team. There we go, we've got him over on the far left. That's Methodical Melody, otherwise known as Steven Patterson. And they're in the middle, pinch hitting tonight because Seth couldn't make it. So we appreciate him stepping in, even though he's technically, uh, he, he decided to not play League of Legends full-time this time. We appreciate our alternate Zane Thrash, otherwise known as Mr. Gunk, stepping in on this one. And of course, there on the far right, we've got Charlie Greek, Frisbee Meniscus, I believe is the way to pronounce that. So we got Frisbee in the house tonight. Uh, as well, so he's going to be playing, and they're all going to be getting underway here shortly. Uh, looking forward to seeing where they go with this one. So uh, it looks like they're just getting their their uh, characters picked right now, and just getting in queue. So we're going to be jumping back in here in a second. Thank you so much for being with us. As always, we appreciate any time you're willing to give to us to. Uh, check out our esports program and support the guys. We appreciate it, as always. Uh, kind of a somber note here, even though I do want to mention it. Our hearts and prayers do go out to the police officers in Huntsville. We found out tonight uh, we have at least one officer down who didn't make it, and I believe there's two in the hospital there at Huntsville who are fighting for their lives, and we certainly pray that they're able to pull out of that. And we thank all of our law enforcement and our first responders, and we also thank the families of those guys, because that is not an easy life, wondering every night if your dad's going to come home or not, or whether or not your husband is not going to make it tonight, and so uh, just a tragic situation, and we pray 
that the police officers there are able to recover and for the family of the police officer who didn't make it just i i hope that they find some peace in knowing that their dad is a fallen hero and uh just don't know what to say on that a horrible situation but we pray for the entire community of Huntsville this evening so that hopefully they will be comforted in that sense uh when it oh, sorry computer is acting weird on me again uh, also, we would like to extend our sympathies to the Nashville community, of course, with that school shooting at the private Christian school. As as a private Christian school ourselves, we can understand, you know, some level of what that's like. Obviously, we can't relate on the mass shooting side, thank God, uh, but we do relate to them in the sense that we're also a private Christian institution, and that could have happened to us. And so we're very grateful to uh, uh, to the the resource officers and the people that were responsible for bringing that mass shooter to justice. Uh, but of course, losing uh, three precious lives in the wake of that, where our hearts and prayers go out to the Nashville community as well. And being a part of that private Christian educational institution community, we certainly uh, do wish the best for them and hope that they're able to rely on God and to recover from that. So. I know that that's not the the best happy-go-lucky, feel-good way that you would like to start out a broadcast like this, but uh, it is important to mention that. It is important to talk about things like that, even if it's, uh, you know, not why we're here tonight. We certainly do uh, pray for the best for both of those communities, Huntsville and Nashville, and and hope that you will join us in praying for them as well. you know what, in fact, why, why don't we go ahead and offer a prayer uh, for them right here on the air and uh, just kind of have a, uh, uh, just just offer some prayers here for that just a second. So I'm, I'm wearing my equipment right now, but if you will, uh, maybe I can wire work that. To, uh, okay. Give me just a second. I want to make sure that the game doesn't start for some reason in the middle of this, just to just to make sure. Yeah, there we go. All right, so if y'all would, I'm going to take my headphones off here in a second, and I think I've, from the technical side, figured out how to make this work. So if y'all will, bow with me, and we'll offer a quick prayer for that community as well. Lord, we're so thankful for all the many blessings that you've given to us. We appreciate that you have seen fit to be with the community and sustain us, keep us safe throughout this night, and we pray also and, and intently that you will be with the families of those affected in Nashville and Huntsville. You would bless them, and uh, you would help them to, even in this incredibly difficult and, and horrible circumstance they have found themselves in, Father, uh, we pray earnestly that you would help them through that. You would offer them the comfort and strength that only you can, and ultimately that you would be able to have them grow in their relationship with you. We pray that they would accept a a stance of gratitude when it comes to their loved ones, and that as it is that they won't be able to be with them here on this earth anymore, the ones that have been lost, you would give them comfort in that and help them be grateful for the time that they were given. Lord, we pray that when it comes to the other families of the police officers that are still alive, that you would be with the medical professionals that are helping them at Huntsville right now, that you would help them to work quickly and skillfully, and that the care that they have been given will be compassionate, and that it will be fruitful, and that they will recover and get to be with their families again. Father, we pray you would be with all of the families involved in the community at large, that you would help them to get through this. And we pray that we would always remember to be grateful for you for every good and wonderful blessing that does come from all these things we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. All right. So I know that that's not why you jumped on the broadcast this night, but I just really felt that it was important that we discuss All right, it looks as though my uh, batteries are running a bit low. Hopefully we'll be able to fix that soon, and we'll be getting underway here in just a second. 
Uh, we don't have much longer there picking their mains or whatever. Uh, let's see if we can get a look inside the arena. Yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, the guys are just working on that right now. Just waiting on them to go ahead and uh, get their cues in. So hopefully we'll be able to start here in just a minute. And we'll be getting to play Wayne State. You know, um, All right, so, sorry, I was having a few mic issues. Hopefully, it doesn't become a problem. I don't know what Steven's doing in there. Just being dramatic, I think. But, yeah, we are back, and, and hopefully won't have any mic issues or any uh, technical snafus any longer. Looking forward to this game getting underway. Hopefully, we'll be able to... get done here before too long. So Wayne State is currently at uh, batting 500. They have a 1-1 record, so they have won a game, have lost a game. So far, Faulkner has only played one game because it was spring break last week, which means that we actually did not get a chance to play last week, but hopefully we'll be able to get out a win here. Uh, I know that the team's been working really hard, and uh, we also really, I think, have a desire to do really well because last year, these guys are hungry for this. Last year, just coming within an eyelash of winning the championship, and being able to come runner-up against a very good Seneca team last year, I think they kind of want to prove themselves and to prove that they're going to be able to win this one. So I really hope that they're able to do that. I really hope they're able to pull out a championship uh, like they, they came very close to doing last year. And you can tell that the guys really want to make that happen. And so hopefully uh, we'll be able to make that goal into a reality. We're hoping that that happens sooner rather than later. And it looks like they're about done with picking. Let's go ahead and jump in and see how that process is going. Um, can we bring that up here? I think we can. There we go. All right. Whoop. Everyone just... Wrong one. There we go. So, yeah, you're seeing there that they've got the loadout ready. So they're going to be... Coming up here in just a few minutes. And we will be joining in in about 25 seconds. But looking forward to it. We should be done here in just a minute. There we go. Okay, so there is going to be a slight spectator delay, uh, which is fine. We knew that was going to happen. We knew that was uh, going to take place soon. So we're just kind of in the countdown phase right now. And uh, we'll see who the picks are. We'll go ahead and jump to... Yeah, so we can we can kind of jump in and get a sneak peek here. So it looks like we've got... Butcher Ergot, Bola Bear, uh, Ahiri, Caitlin. Interesting. All right, so they're going to get started. We're just going to wait on the delay here. Just going to see 
what we've got going on here. And it's just going to be one of those things we just got to wait for a few minutes. Shouldn't be too long. They're getting underway. They're getting everything ready. Uh, wasn't able to get a good glimpse of the rosters, unfortunately. I did see that we've got a Volo Bear for a jungler, but that was about it before everything loaded out. So we'll just have to wait just a couple more minutes until the spectator mode starts up again. So I tell you what. While we're waiting on that, why don't we go ahead and hear a quick word from our computer, to science, uh, computer science department here at Faulkner. Did you know that 100% of Faulkner's computer science graduates since 2014 have found jobs in their fields within six months of graduating? It's a great time to be a computer scientist. Everyone is walking around with a computer in their pocket in the form of a smartphone. And it takes software developers to make those things work. I built church websites, and through the training and instruction that I received from Faulkner, I was able to go right into my career after graduation. It laid a solid foundation for what you need to know. I'm getting a lot of hands-on experience within my field, and also they're just giving me a wide variety of options of things that I might want to pursue in the future. In the state of Alabama alone, there are over 4,000 tech-related jobs available. And the preparation that you receive at Faulkner University will allow you to go to work almost anywhere as a software developer. It's a great time to be a Faulkner Eagle, and it's a great time to be a computer scientist. I hope you'll come and join us. All right, and we're back, and we're about ready to get underway. We actually timed that pretty much perfectly. So uh, we're going to go ahead, and the game just started, so we're going to go ahead and jump in here. Look at that. We got the lineup already. Uh, we're going to be jumping into the game here in just a moment. So right now we've got uh, Ergot, Volibear, Ahiri, Caitlyn. Ooh, I like the Pulsefire Caitlyn skin. That's nice. Uh, Glacic, and then on the other side, Olaf. Oh, here we go. We're starting. There we go. So we got Faulkner on blue side. Welcome to Summoner's Rift. The Raptor Call is going to go Volibear. That's interesting. I haven't seen him play Volibear in a little while. Then we got Mr. Gunk. 30 seconds until and they're going to be sticking together early on here. Try to get maybe like an early kill. Take out that ward. And it looks like they're just kind of clustering around the middle for now. Neither team want to fill out the other one. Maybe they're worried about an ambush. So, Mr. Gunk's character kind of reminds me of that, like, weird erector set spider thing from Toy Story. Y'all remember that? I don't know why, but that's exactly what it looks like to me. Alright, so both <laughs> waiting in the weeds. Feeling one another out. Oh, and look at that. Alright, Mr. Gunk really throwing up some numbers here, doing a lot of damage. And goodbye, struggling to stay alive. We got a little bit of a fight, a little skirmish here down on bot lane. Marsh trying to snipe off some minions there. So you can see both teams trying to fill one another out a little bit here. Methodical Melody playing Caitlyn. Oh, 
Ooh. All right. Melody misses a shot there, Mr. Gunk. Taking out some minions. Take him down, Gunk. Do it. There you go. Faulkner with first blood. And seemingly getting a pretty good push on bottom lane, too. Gotcha. Mr. One Shot getting hit by the charm, but can he come back and get the kill here? Come on. Oh, gonna retreat into the safety of the turret there. But Mr. Gunk looking like he might get a second kill. Pretty impressive if he's able to get off two. And he does! Zane having quite a night here. Now he winds up getting killed directly after it, but man, first two kills of the game. Not bad. We see Marsh here trying to run a very hit and run kind of campaign. Definitely favors the more guerrilla tactics. By the way, I was probably like 20 years old before I realized the way to say that word is guerrilla, not gorilla. Two completely different things. Captain, Mr. One Shot, doing a good job of keeping mid lane in Faulkner control. But now Volibear in a little bit of trouble, and Frisbee trying to help him out, but he's not going to make it. Mark winds up taking him out. And as much as it would have been good for him to get away from there, with their mid laner coming down, I'm not sure that it would have made a difference. So. Faulkner goes from having a 2-0 kill lead now to being down by one. That team fight did not go well for us. And now it looks like Wayne State's going to try to take Dragon here. Can they do it or will Faulkner get a steal? It doesn't look like they're going to contest at all. Yep, and here they go. Red team gets the first Dragon. So that's going to give them an advantage. Mr. One Shot still kind of at a stalemate with their mid laner. And with that ult, Mr. One Shot in a little bit of trouble here. But he's still sticking around and using his turret to his advantage. Looks like he's going to be all right. Sonic Melody trying to snipe here. Oh, and a nice shield by Gunk, throwing it up right before he gets hit. Good defensive move there. here on bot lane bot lane getting a lot more aggressive than they were to start out with we were kind of owning bot lane to begin with but now that started to pick up with us a bit and raptor claw in some trouble got three after him now and yeah that's going to be it for him erie winds up getting credit for that kill but vola bear in some real trouble there that's the second time he's gone down 
just kind of got caught by a gank. Oh man. And that ult winds up taking out Mr. One Shot. Really unfortunate timing on his part. And Methodical Melody in some trouble in bot lane. Dunk might get another kill on the moon here. Now another fight going on in bot lane. And uh, Melody and Meniscus are going to have to run for their lives. Luckily, Raptor Claw able to get off his ult here and winds up getting shut down. Or, sorry, winds up shutting them down, but then Lizard winds up killing him. So, Raptor Claw does his best to try to stop the bleeding there. But now, Wayne State with a substantial kill lead and a slight lead in gold as well. Come on, one shot. All right, so Gunk taking out a plate. That's going to help with the gold disadvantage. <laughs> one shot doing a really fantastic job of making mincemeat of these minions, which I know doesn't sound like that big a deal, but it gives his minions a much clearer path to help attack that turret. Oh, and Kermidor is going to try to take down the blue buff and is able to do it. Blue Golem is down. Alright, let's see if this bottom lane contest goes better for our guys this time. And one shot being able to take down the ult there. Gotta hand it to one shot. He's been very efficient this round. Oh, and Gunk coming in to try to steal and is able to get a kill on Kimmerord. And one shot able to take down his target. Which was impressive considering how low his HP was at the time. And now they're going after Eerie. Can they get him? Come on, guys. Yeah. And did it without taking the loss. So Faulkner, which not too long ago was at a 4-8 deficit when it came to kills, now closing that gap substantially. 7-9. And it looks like, are they going for the Rift Herald there? So it looks like the contest in bot lane is still the closest out of all the competitions we've got right now. Props to Steven for holding his guys at bay though. All right, Faulkner has summoned the Rift Herald. And we got a turret. Not bad, fellas. All right, so the Rift Herald goes down, but can Faulkner still capitalize on that? They got Gunk and Raptor Claw. Yeah, they got this one. And their mid laner tries to sneak up to stop it inside. And maybe not. So Faulkner's still on the deficit when it comes to kills, although that not for long. Yeah, Mr. One-Shot gets Kimmerord. So 
though still at a slight disadvantage on kills but after taking two turrets getting the rift herald to help them out with that Faulkner looking like they're in a much better position than just a few minutes ago all the momentum has shifted in their direction So both teams kind of taping, taking a step back, trying to prepare for their next big move. Oh man, and they're both trying to gank Gunk. Gunk is able to get a kill, but he's in trouble now. Has to get out of there. And here comes Vola Bear. And Mr. Gunk. Wow. So Faulkner has really started to balance it out, but really we're kind of dominating here. And take down Lizard. But Marsh is able to get the kill ultimately to put Wayne State ahead. So now Mr. One Shot is the only living player and look at him, he sneaks right up in top lane, starts doing some damage to their first turret here. And now going to retreat, that's probably the smart thing to do. But Wayne State claims their first turret. And they're going to head back. And Raptor Claw going to take the red buff. That could be helpful. And Kimrord going to get a red buff as well. So this is funny. Our two top planers going at it on bottom lane. Seems like both teams have the same idea. shot dominating oddly enough in top lane so we've got our two mid laners in top lane and our two top laners in bottom lane come on one shot you got it nice one shot takes down chromial and we got a little fight in bottom lane and one shot able to well wound up trading wound up killing each other All right, so you got Wayne State here losing a turret, but now they're taking on the dragon. It doesn't look like Faulkner is going to contest. Well, I say that, Gunk's here. Not good. So they waited too long to jump in. And I get the strategy they were going to try to kill by just like hiding as long as possible and just looking up and happening to get the killing blow. But 
I think they waited a little too long and then all five of the other team was on top of them. There wasn't much they could do to stop that. They wound up losing, I think, Gunk and Frisbee in that exchange. And now the Rift Herald's out. And with too many of Faulkner's people down, it looks like Wayne State's gonna try to take the Rift Herald here. The Polar Bear kind of peeked there out of the corner, but decided it was better not to challenge at this point. So again, Chromiel, their mid laner, some, for some reason, still up here in top lane. It's interesting how we've made this little transition here. out got eerie on his tail and this eerie is fed it is doing some major damage and now we got frisbee and gunk going after marsh and polar bear gonna take on eerie and looks like he's gonna get the better of him here. Oh, pops ult. Come on, Volo Bear. Get it done. There we go. Whoa, what a comeback. Eerie winds up taking out Volo Bear. Wow. Really didn't see that coming. I thought Volo Bear had him. And I know Ethan was upset about that. How could you not be? All right, so Gunk gets eerie, but Marsh winds up getting a kill there as well and winds up going down. Oh, and one shot gets Lizard. And they shut down Lizard too, nice. Unfortunately, Faulkner does lose a third in that exchange as well. they've summoned the Rift Herald, so. All right, Gunk. It's a shutdown on Kim Rador. And Ethan going for the red buff. And gets it. And now Wayne State gets a red buff as well. Uh oh. Melody getting chased here. And camera roll lines up taking. So you can really see the money difference starting to make a big impact here. Come on, one shot. You got this. There you go. 
one shot making clever use of the turret able to distract him long enough to let the turret finish him off well done one shot that's why he's the captain Voices in unison. Looks like Wayne State gonna go for the Baron. Always thought it looked like something off the air. All right, and Faulkner gonna challenge here. Come on, guys, get this done. Oh. Whoa. Sorry, I don't know what just happened. Sorry guys, I have no idea what just happened. Our computer just malfunctioned for some reason. Ooh. And Wayne State gets the Baron. Ah, uh, it's no bueno. And the blue buff on top of the Baron. Wayne State's going to take another Faulkner turret. And it looks like they're going to go for the base here, going to make a push. Let's see if the Eagles can hold them off. Those super minions from the Baron are not helping. But we do get another turret off. Looks like everybody's going to jump in here to defend the base. Uh oh. So we do get a kill, but the blue turret goes down. So a double kill on us. And we're down one inhibitor. Gonna need to stop the bleeding here. This is not looking good. The three of our team members missing, that's gonna be ball game right there. Oh no. Well, not the way you wanted that one to end up. But that's the way it goes sometimes. Really unfortunate wound up losing it that way would really have liked to been able to do it differently get a different end result of course but you know it seemed like they just kind of got on a roll and started snowballing and Faulkner came within striking distance several times and even for a long time had the advantage on things like turrets and had more buffs but uh, just a couple things went the wrong way. First of all, not being able to challenge on the Baron Nasher, just being underleveled and not being able to get the still that they wanted, and not really being able to get many buffs at all. You know, they they weren't able to get any dragons in that round. They weren't able to get the Baron. They got the Riff Herald once, and other than that, it was just red and blue buffs. And so, with that being said, it was kind of unfortunate that it wound up going that way. So, really sad that we weren't able to get another one.
but we are fine. We'll just be waiting here, and we will let you know about game two, because remember, this is a best of three, which means that the guys get another chance. They will be able to play in the next one, and if they win that one, we can go ahead and go on to a round three. So hopefully that is the case. I am perfectly fine with it being a late night here if it means Faulkner gets the victory out of it. So hopefully that will be the eventual result. Just waiting on them to go ahead and get their pick for round two. I'm not sure exactly what the strategy would be on that. I think if uh, one of the signs that they... I don't know. It, it wasn't like there was a single character that really stood out or really ate their lunch. Uh, I know that they were holding their own on top and bottom lane for most of it. It seemed like they struggled a little bit more on bot. And part of that may be that they have Zane instead of Seth, which means that they had to sort of reconfigure themselves. And so Frisbee, who has been playing top, instead played bottom this time as support in Seth's place. But, you know, it could be any number of things, and we'll just have to see where that goes. But uh, they've got to be getting ready here in a second. We'll go ahead and take a look in and see how that's going for them. Yeah, you can see there they're just getting ready, trying to contemplate exactly what it is they need to do moving forward. And hopefully they can figure that out. Just kind of thinking what they should do to counter there. And by the way, I should mention, we actually have two more League of Legends matches this week. So because of spring break being last week, we actually had to miss our match against Kaiser. So Kaiser and Faulkner rescheduled, and luckily they were nice enough to agree to a Friday game. So we actually have games at 6 o'clock on Thursday and Friday. So we've got a game against Kaiser on Friday and then our regularly scheduled game on Thursday. So be sure to check those out when you get a chance. If you're a big League of Legends fan, we got plenty of League of Legends here for you. There is no shortage of League of Legends. Especially not this week where we got three games. And let's see what Ethan's doing over there on the other side. Yeah, Ethan over there underneath the Rigitar USA High Res Arena logo, just kind of looking over what was going on last match, trying to pick out who he should ban, what he should pick this time. You know, of all the games that we play here with Faulkner Esports, League of Legends is by far the most complicated. And so, really, really difficult, high level of skill, high level of strategy. Oh, and I'm getting waved at by our Overwatch captain outside of the arena. Good to see you, Trey. Appreciate you being here. But we got other events going on at the school right now. We got Jamboree, which is coming up here soon. And that's going to be within the this week, I think, or most of the showings. I know that we've got the... Let's see. Which one is... I know that a lot of people are really excited. That's something that we've been doing here for a long time. Uh, but yeah, a lot of people excited about that. A lot of people really like Jamboree. Um, I'm not really a theater guy, so it's not really so much my thing, but people here go crazy for it. And I saw some of the teams practicing over here in the multiplex here at Bridgetar USA High Res Arena. They were directly underneath and they were pulling out all the stops. I saw a bunch of people dressed up in different costumes and doing all kinds of different music. At one point, I heard Billy Idol's Dancing with Myself, so a little preview there. They're probably going to be playing that at some point during uh, that performance, but everybody here puts in a lot of work to that, so if you're interested in that, be sure to check out our official website, and you'll be able to get tickets for that 
Uh, we also have some other sporting events going on. We got the big spring football game coming here in a few weeks. I believe April 14th is the day for that. So that's a Friday, I think so, because my brother's birthday is that Sunday. So lots of really big, important events coming up here shortly in Fa at Faulkner. I know we have one more girls soccer game, if I'm not mistaken, before it's, it's not like an official game because their season is actually in the fall. Uh, but we have like one more scrimmage in the girls' soccer lineup. And so we got lots of big things going on sports-wise. And, of course, Faulkner baseball, which is always fun. I've already been to a couple games this year and love baseball, big baseball guy. So really enjoy watching the Eagles perform against everybody else. All right, so it looks like we're just waiting on a couple of the Wayne State guys. Oh, sorry. I don't know what. Why am I? I don't understand why my camera does something to do with the graphics card. But we're just waiting on them. Let's go ahead and take a look in and see how the picks are going. Kind of hard to tell there. Very small print from the preview that I'm getting. But it looks like Faulkner has already picked Mordekaiser, so I imagine that would be their top laner. And it looks like they've banned Uloi. I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that. And Pike. Which Uloi makes sense because that support character really seemed to help and, and give an advantage to whoever she was nearby at the time in the last game, so I can understand why they're a little more skeptical of that. So they have banned... Is that Bane and Nocturne? I think so. So now Faulkner is picking bands. And now Wayne State. They banned Caitlin, which means Steven's going to have to pick somebody else. I really like Caitlin. She's one of my favorite characters even though I actually usually play top lane. I don't play bot much. Although you could probably guess that I'm a top laner considering I'm wearing a Garen shirt. All right, Faulkner just has seven seconds left to ban somebody. And I'm hoping that you at home are getting a better shot of this because I got to be honest, that print is way too small. I can't, I can't read the names. I need a bigger preview monitor. All right, so down to our last picks. Faulkner and Wayne State. We're going to be picking up in game two here in just a minute. I just got a message from one of my close friends who worked for the Huntsville Police Department. And he let me know that the name of the officer that passed is Garrett Crumbly. And so our thoughts and prayers go out to the Crumby family. 
can't imagine what that's like. But certainly do pray for them. That's just a horrible situation to have to deal with. All right, looks like all the bands and picks are in place. And uh, it looks like uh, we've got Seth coming in here. Um, who he the reason he wasn't here is because he was doing a concert tonight. Hey Seth, do you want to do commentary? All right, cool. Yes. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get Seth mic'd up here for a second, and then we're going to throw him on commentary. Um, so the thing is though I don't like I've already got the camera set up so it may take me a second to get that fixed but uh, it'll be good to have you on it's always good to have some expertise some color commentary on to make things a little bit more colorful as the name implies. Live right now. All right, does that mean my voice is live right now? Uh, should be. Can people hear me? Yep, I'm getting you loud and clear. Awesome, well, hello, my name's Seth Dawson, and y'all probably recognize me as uh, the Smash Bros. Well, I don't know if you'll recognize. You might recognize my voice. I've done commentary <laughs> for uh, a few games now, and I'm the Smash Bros. team captain and a member of the uh, League of Legends team that's playing right now. Uh, unfortunately, I was not able to be here initially due to uh, having a conflicting class. Uh, but glad I was able to get out a little early and get here to join and do some commentary for my fellow leaguers. Yeah, and we appreciate you being here with us, Seth. It's always a pleasure to have you here. And we will be getting underway here momentarily. Uh, they've already done their picks in their bands, so we're just waiting for it to populate. We've got, a, of course, a three-minute delay mm -hmm. yeah. for competitive play. Like, yeah, I can kind of peek in and see some of their screens and see that, uh, yeah, I see they're, uh, they're doing their pick right now. Nice, it looks like uh, Mr. Gunk, or Zane, as y'all might know him, has gone Morgenkaiser on top lane. Really, really strong pick, one that I like to go a lot. And, ironically, not one I've seen him do very often. Normally, I see him on, uh, I see him playing, uh, I'm trying to remember, I think it's Graves is the name of the character. He, uh, it's a character that actually really strong throughout most of the game, but especially in the early landing phase as he's able to throw out these barrels which just control huge areas and just completely block out your opponent from getting any good CS. Um, Morin Kaiser is... I'm seeing... Uh, they may have... They did not. So they, the opponents didn't ban Graves, it seems. So I'm interested to see, like, they just... It seems they picked Morin Kaiser specifically... I don't know if they picked him first and the opponent counterpicked or what they did, but I know they definitely probably planned ahead for it. But definitely probably? <laughs> definitely probably. That's, that's always a good one. I love that one. <laughs> I don't know. I always found that one funny. If anyone's listened to me and talk nine times out of ten, what I end up saying is contradictory to itself. <laughs> so <laughs> One way to look at it, I guess. So we are having to reconfigure uh, live on the air, uh, but, you know, 
that's the thing about live sporting events. Sometimes you gotta you gotta you know just kind of reconfigure everything in the middle of it. Uh, and now y'all can all see my beautiful face. Let's not get crazy, <laughs> Seth. Uh, so now yeah, they have the main reason for being here. <laughs> right. That's that's what draws the crowds in. Exactly. Let's see. So we have Mr. Gunk going Morgan Kaiser. Really, really strong. Uh, lane bully oftentimes going against a Fiora in the top lane. Fiora is a really strong one on one duelist and excels against uh, really tanky characters with low mobility. I is really and she has a lot of dashes that are good at dodging uh, uh, skill shot, which is a lot of what Morgan Kaiser has. So we'll see how this will come down a lot to just a skill base. And if there's anyone I know with a good amount of skill, it's uh, Mr. Gunk, so I look forward to seeing how this goes. It looks like in the, ah, it looks like the game is starting. I don't know if they, can they see that it's starting yet? Uh, they probably can't. Ah, okay. Well, the game's starting for them. It hasn't started for us yet. But in the mid lane, Mr. One Shot, our team captain, is playing... I do not remember her, the name of her. Uh, it's an Ice Witch, though. Really good at freezing the enemies. I don't know much about Who, the character. Who, One Shot? Yeah. Irelia? Irelia, that's the name of the character. I don't know much about the character, but I know uh, Mr. One Shot, easily one of the best players on our team, considering, especially, you know, considering he's a team captain. Really knows what he's doing, so I look forward to seeing how he plays. Uh, looks okay. So it looks like the game for the uh team has officially started. Right, we got one minute so, fifty seconds before we get yeah. to our coverage. All right, so we're gonna be seeing what they're up to here in just a little bit. All right, so uh, I tell you what, Seth. While we're here waiting on everybody, um, who do we have here? Uh, who? See, this is the problem when we're doing the waiting thing. I actually can't tell uh who's playing what. Um, Let's see. It looks like we've got Ash. Um, I don't know who would be playing Ash in this. One. Ash, most likely that's being played by uh, Steven. I oh, that makes made. sense because he was actually playing Caitlyn last round, but then they banned mm. Caitlyn for this one. Got did that? Did we win the first round? We did not. Ah, okay. Yeah, a couple of things just kind of unfortunately went the other way. Uh, we had one steal on the Baron Nasher that went mm -hmm. terribly wrong, <laughs> unfortunately. That can happen. It's going for a steal, it's a high risk, high reward. But if you're behind, sometimes it's the only option you have to go for. Uh, so the other team seemed to really like taking out dragons as quickly as they could. And so yeah. I'm guessing that they're going to be counterpicking this round to try to avoid mm -hmm. that. As a, as a support primary player myself, Right. A big part of my job when I'm playing support is to help ensure that the team can secure things like dragon. Dragon, mm -hmm. uh, the dragon buffs are really important. Uh, each dragon, each different type of dragon gives you a different kind of buff. Right. Uh, but most importantly is getting dragon soul, which means once you kill four dragons, you get a really big buff based on whatever the last dragon you killed was. Uh, and it can really turn the tides of games. If you're losing, like if you're behind, getting Dragon Soul can boost you to at least even in many situations. And getting Dragon Soul while you're ahead almost cinches the game into your favor and makes it nearly impossible for the opposing team to come back. Okay, and we're about to get underway here. All right. Any second. Someday. There we go. Here we go. All right. It looks like we have Sej uh, Sejuani in the jungle being played by Raptor. Claw. This is a character I've seen him play pretty often. Uh, pretty mobile character. I don't know the mechanics of it very well, but I know it really strong. And any it it's one of those characters that once it gets ahead, once it gets going, it's really really hard to keep them from running you over. Mm -hmm. Let's see. 
Uh, and of course, Methodical Melody, or Steven, as I was saying, is playing Ash. And that means Frisbee Maroon, that uh, Minicus is our support player for today. Playing Baraka, I believe, is the name of the character. I am not 100% sure. But a really, uh, really good support character focuses a lot on healing, I believe. Welcome to Summoner's Rift. Well, we're uh, glad to be here. All right, looks like we're not going for any for any too big uh, shenanigans. Uh, let's see, do they notice this A soul in the Aurelian soul is the name of the Dari dragon character? Didn't we play an Aurelian soul in the last match? We you're did. I, uh, in the Sometimes last. You're the you mean the last game before? Right. Not the one. The only today. one we played. If you're talking about the other match we played today, I don't know. If you're talking about the one. The one you the, were in. Uh, ah, gotcha. Okay. <laughs> That's where the confusion was. That's how I'll clarify. Uh, yes, we did. Uh, Aurelian Soul has. He's been recently nerfed. Uh, <laughs> but when they recently did a rework for him, and he was really really strong every game was always a first pick or a ban when it came to him let's think we're gonna get some action in the top lane with morton kaiser morton kaiser really really strong in the very beginning but we have to be very careful with your getting those uh uh i'm trying to remember what they're, they're essentially weak points when she's around you she sets a weak point on you that if she hits deals a lot of damage so she's a debuffer to some extent. Mid lane, Mr. One Shot re doing a really good job of pushing back the opposing player, just trying to deny him that wave. Uh, let's see. Mr. Gunk in the top lane trying to take some uh, trades with Fiora, with the opposing Fiora, but not currently losing the trade, which makes sense. Fiora is an amazing 1v1 and great against tank. Like, uh, Morgan Kaiser. Uh, looks like our, uh, bot lane is doing pretty well right now. Getting some really good trades in, but they have to really be careful. Respect the level 2. Luckily, our guy's getting, uh, hitting level 2 right as the opposing player fight to engage. You know, it's interesting. What we're seeing here is a complete turnaround on teams because in the first match, and I know you weren't here for the first match, so... Mm -hmm. Uh, normally what happens is between match one and match two or match three, you'll see some characters repeat and then of course some get banned. Uh, in this one, both teams are completely different. Oh, really? Yeah. So I'm honestly not real sure what to expect because it seems like every single person is playing a different character. Everyone different tried champion. to make adjustment to... Yep. Just try and confuse the opponent more. Aurelian Soul is has been really strong recently because of his rework and basically what he does is he stacked up stardust and this it just infinitely stacks and infinitely scales and basically what it does the more stardust he has the more the wider range his abilities cover and also the more damage he deals just in general morton kaiser doing a good job uh getting the level uh advantage against the Fiora and just Completely pushing her back after that early dominance we saw from Jura just completely making up for that. You know, Gunk did exactly the same thing in the last match, and he was really kind of owning the rest of the team for the whole match after that. So he's probably trying to reestablish that early dominance. And Raptor Claw going to take a step back. Mr. One Shot doing really good getting the first KO there. Can they convert this into a double kill? Have to be careful because they're both at really low life. Aurelian Soul, if he can get those, if he was able to get any kills there, that's a really big buff to uh, his Stardust. Yeah, honestly, you love to get the double kill, but the thing is you don't want to get greedy and then make it a trade mm -hmm. to where it negates your advantage. Uh, Mr. One Shot, our team captain, uh, kind of told me something that uh, about just a, a thought process to have when you're playing, and that it, and the way we've been practicing is just Try not to have, uh, go for having less than four deaths. Your goal throughout the game is to die less than four times. If you can manage that, you're probably going to do decently well. 
Uh, Hecarom coming in to try and get a gank on bot lane. Really good backup uh, from Frisbee Minutes. Gets getting using Flash to get out of there and survive. Yeah, absolutely. Kudos to Frisbee for saving his bacon back there. Because mm -hmm. that really came close to being a kill in Frisbee. Uh, that's the kind of teamwork you like to see as a coach. Let's see. Ash knows Hecarom there, it seems. Just trying to... Let's, okay, well, the screens aren't going to show us, but Mr. One Shot going in, getting some good trades with the Aurelian Soul. For sure. Mr. Gunk just using that W, uh, building up that meter. Uh, if you can see that little white meter underneath his health bar, the more he damage he deals, the more that'll build up over time, and it activates on his W. And what that does is gives him a shield based on the amount of uh, the white bar he has filled up. And uh, he can activate a second guy time to uh, heal him for that amount, which gives Morgan Kai's a really good sustain. Once he uh, gets a couple levels into that ability, especially. Looks like our guys might be setting up to try and either protect or take Dragon. I will say it's interesting watching Mr. One-Shot be much more conservative than we're used to seeing in mid lane. I wonder if that's because he's saving his HP for something important or what he's going to do with it. Normally, he's a little bit more aggressive in mid lane. He has a very... He has a very good sense of, like, when he can and can't take a good trade or win a fight. Mm-hmm. Uh... Yeah, that's that kind of instinct that just mm -hmm. comes from playing the game a lot. I, I, I've been playing a short enough time that I have a hard time recognizing when I may or may not be able to win a fight. And sometimes you can win a fight even if you have less HP than your opponent. Uh, without, and you sometimes just don't recognize it. Mr. Gunk getting a good, uh, really good pull there on the Yora just... It, All right. Really good kill there. Uh, just no, be doing a really good job knowing how to uh, use his abilities, good predictions on where she was going to be, and just keeping her within that circle that just constantly deals damage. So the longer the fight went on, the better it was for him. Oh, and it looks like Gunk he might come. He has his shield fully up, so he he's tankier than he looks like. Yeah, and right yeah. there, the opponent tried to ult on him, thinking he was uh, closer to death than he really was. But that shield, especially with that max power, gives him a huge HP bump. And that kill and it looks sort like of we're paved going the way the for him to dragon. get the dragon here. Yeah, nice. Uh, we're able to push our lanes forward and just clear things up, so we'd have an easy dragon there. All right, so Faulkner already with a 4 nothing advantage on kills and the first dragon. Faulkner looking a lot yeah. better than they did in the last round where it See. was very even for the early match. Not to mention we're also uh, 2k ahead on gold, which yeah. oftentimes in a game, the most important thing to notice is the gold. Like the right. gold difference dictates like especially uh, early in the game. Yeah, sometimes that can be an even bigger difference than level. Mm -hmm. Because how much gold your team's made dictates like how many items your team's going to have. And the m items do so much to strengthen your character. Uh, let's see, and being, now what we do have to be careful is like the farther ahead you get in a game, uh, League of Legends has this kind of catch up mechanic where if you're really behind, there are certain objectives you can get, like taking a current or getting kills on people that will give you a ton of gold. So like if you're Mr. Gunk and you have two kills under your belt already, you have something called a bounty on your head. Right. And they can get a uh, bounty shut down, which will just uh, give them a ton of gold. But right now, our guys in bot lane are doing really good. Yep, really good kill too. there. Having to be careful. Got another kill, but Methodical Melody has to be really careful. Ooh. Really unfortunate death, but we were still able to make it a two for one. 
Yeah, as and Gunk can... happened to get a kill at the same time up here. Looks like he's going to try to take this turret. He's already got nice, one plate got off. Nice, good plating. Yep, uh, got every plate off. And something to know is like, while they're plating there, every time you take off a plate, you get a big boost in gold. Mm-hmm. And we just took two close to three. Yep. Uh, that means he got something like an extra 350 gold, which is just a huge boost. Mr. One Shot really has to be careful. That trade really kind of hurt him. He was able to push back the Aurelian pull, but trying to back up, he lost a lot of HP. Oh, and Probably Eerie going to come in here to try to stop, stop the bleeding on the turret there. Mr. Gunk right now just way too far ahead for Fiora to be able to effectively do much. Raptor Claw and Mr. One Shot really collapsing in on this Hecarim, able to take him out. Nice. And now they they may be able to get the Eerie as well. Nope, Eerie retreats to top Now lane. they may be able to come up here and help with this Fiora, which really, really close. Let's see, they might still be able to get it if they can get a good current die. Oh, and the Rift Herald. Oh, I didn't even know. Well, I don't know when we got the Rift Herald. Yeah, but that's I didn't really see good. that either. That's uh, pretty much guaranteed to destroy that current now. No, well, okay. Close. Barely was it, it barely missed it, but that means that turn's going down probably within this next couple seconds, within this next wave. Uh, Hecarim's coming up to try and see if he can do something about Kaiser in the top lane, but no, he's just sticking in the jungle. And we got the current in yep. the top lane. Turret is down. Really, really strong lead from us so far. We still have to be careful. Uh, Aurelian Thol can... Uh, Mr. one Shot just doing such a good job of denying uh, Stardust stack through the Aurelian Thol. Yeah, and that's the just thing. Forcing sometimes, him to stay back. Sometimes starving a character can be just as effective, if not more so, than actually just killing the character a bunch of mm -hmm. times. And he's done a really good job of just kind of starving him out. I wish it would let me uh, check to see how uh, what the stats are for the Aurelian Soul, but I can how tell do I you do it's that? not nearly as high as it should be. How do I do that? Do I just press tab? Oh, uh, yeah. Try pressing tab real quick. There we go. Uh, and let me fade I, down on the Faulkner logo there. Let the... Unfortunately, no, that does not show stat for the Stardust. Unfortunate. But uh, we can use this to... Actually, if you can pull that up real quick. Yeah, absolutely. We can see that a lot of our guys, particularly our mid laner, Mr. One Shot, has a 600 gold bounty on him. Uh... So that's something you have to be really aware of is just how large your bounty is because sometimes uh, people might think, okay, getting a one, uh, like even a two for one trade, like if he died but took out two people uh, with him, that really probably wouldn't be worth it because there's not a guarantee that, because them killing him would be equivalent to him killing two of them, essentially. He'd have to kill at least three people to, for it to be really worth it in gold. At this point in the game, I don't even think three people's worth 600, 700 gold at this point. Man, the bounty on him is climbing. Morgan Kaiser doing a good job using his W to tank that shot from the current to just keep himself alive. Looks, looks like we're getting in ourselves another dragon. Everyone's going to come in there and try and seal it, but isn't able to get there in time. All right, and Morgan Kaiser using his ult here to trap this Fiora and just tanking shot from this current. Really unfortunate shutdown there. Got stunned out by the Fiora. And just able to, wasn't quite able to clean up uh, that current kill. That current dive. Looks like a lot of our guys are going in here. Uh, really good shutdown by this uh, severe on the ash, but looks like Raptor Claw is able to clean up that fight. Technically a win for us, but those shutdowns matter a lot. That was yeah, it was a uh, that was, was almost a thousand gold the team earned just for getting those shutdowns. That's important to note as well that we technically won this, but because it was so even, uh, 
you could almost see that as like a rallying victory for the other team. Mm -hmm. So got to be careful here. Now we are up still by 7,000 gold. Right. And so two still turns. got a big advantage. Uh, currently, if you, it's like, it's, it's really good for us, all things, excuse me, all things considered. Uh, but right now, they would, and you can actually see this in the top left hand side. There's currently a 600 uh, gold bounty on Dragons, Rift Herald, and a 300 gold bounty on Current. Uh, so if they were able to get any one of those, that's how much gold they would get for getting one of those objectives, as it's called. Right. So as long as we can keep depressing them, we can keep this up, but we still have to be very careful. But really, really strong lead. Uh, 15 to 14 kills right now in, with our favor. And if we can manage to win this game and bring it back in the next round, uh, if we can manage to win this game, that's actually a really strong starting point for us to bring it back in the next round. Uh, just having that little extra bump to our confidence. Just keeping us... As long as we don't get overconfident, just really good at keeping us from... Wow! Really, really strong... Uh, Really, really strong survival, uh, just dodging skills there shown from Mr. One Shot. Yeah, that's really, one of really those things that just raw skill, mm -hmm. you can tell Daniel's really played this game a lot, able to just kind of skirt mm -hmm. and dodge and. Really around. kind of the same thing the Fiora did to that, that very same Fiora did to Morgan Kaiser, where it just kind of locked him under current for a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, was able to barely survive the current dive and just let the current deal all the damage. All right, and it looks like we're gonna get another Rift Herald. Nice. So Rift Herald, if you're able to get a Rift Herald and get it sent out and hit a current, that's pretty much a guaranteed destruction on a current. And sometimes you can even uh, push them on through and it'll hit upwards of like two turns. The best I've seen was like a game that was just someone was super far ahead. Uh, I think the most you can really do is hit two turns. I'm trying to remember if I've seen someone hit three turns with it before, if that was a different game I'm thinking of. <laughs> Mr. One Shot just waiting in the bushes, waiting for this uh, Fiora to nice. step out. Mr. One Shot just way too strong right now for this Fiora to do anything. Even at this point, uh, safely safely behind that turret has to be careful because Mr. One Shot is fully capable of diving under that turret and killing him. If right, and that turret's on such low HP that if the minions come in here and distract it, they can get turret and yep. get a kill. And, your, and uh, Mr. One Shot was just able to uh, destroy the turret and uh -oh. ooh, this is really unfortunate though. Trying to yeah. still go in and get that kill though. Oh, wow. wow. Cut away and suddenly like Mr. One Shot has killed an opponent and has significantly more health than the last time we saw. And gets two. The double kill. Triple kill. What? Maybe. Well, that 3v1, I thought Mr. One Shot was done for, but we cut away for a half second and come back, and it's just like. It's one of those scenes where, like. In this like that scene movie. in the movie where everything, everything goes, goes black, black and the lights come back on and then all of a sudden there's like one guy that just took everybody exactly. out. Exactly. You know, I just watched Serenity with my friends the other night. There's a scene exactly <laughs> like that. Amazing. There's like 20 Reavers that pull this girl out and then some are like, once the door opens back up, it's just her and like a pile of bodies. Honestly, some of the most, one of the most epic scenes in any movie is just scenes like that. Right. It's like, it's amazing what can be done when you, uh, how epic something can be even when you don't see it. But yeah, Mr. One Shot's performance there was the equivalent of that. I mean, he looked like uh, Captain America in the elevator. Just <laughs> exactly. coming back and everybody's dead. Yeah, so, looks like we're going to get the dragon here. Mm -hmm. That's our third dragon. If we get one more, we'll have dragon soul. And Raptor Claw going for the blue buff here. Looks like he's going to grab that. Just going through, clearing his camp. Yep, Wayne State having to regroup here. 
and you can tell that what it's done is it's freed up our players to gain some ground in other areas as well. Mm-hmm. The only real option for the opposing team at this point is to try and pick off some of our players who aren't quite so far ahead and leveled. Right. Uh, and really, that's going to require multiple of them for the most part. Yeah, the only one that they may have a chance to do that to is Frisbee. Yeah, and that's because he's the support. He's not really yeah, supposed it, to get super far ahead. Uh, well, and also really... it, it means that he's going to pretty much always be around another character, which makes mm -hmm. him much harder to pick off. Exactly. Uh, generally, 9 times 10, the support player is going to be trying to focus on helping the... I think the Hecarim just used his ult to get away from Mr. One-Shot. All right, and here we go. The guy's about to take the Baron, hopefully. Yeah, pretty easy Baron comes. No one else is near this. Uh, Nami might be tr Nami and Severe might be trying to come up and contest this, but no, they decide to back up. Mr. One-Shot's coming up behind them. They seem to have noticed him. They decided to just run. There's nothing they could do about it. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's smarter for them at this point because unless they have basically all five characters, there's no way they're going to be able to do anything there. And Mr. One-Shot going after this Eerie again. And, wow, Mr. One-Shot again finds himself with basically one hand holding off three different characters at once. Able to chase them back into base. <laughs> Even if all three of them engaged him, there's a chance they might have been able to kill him, but he would have at least taken one or two of them with him, guaranteed, so. Yeah, especially considering now that the Baron Nasher is uh, kicked in and they're getting super minions, like, that was just a super high yeah. risk, and there's very little chance they would have got anything out of it. Yeah, those minions are so strong right now with that buff. Well, not anymore, because their guys stepped away from them. They're right. only buffed while our guys are standing next to them. Right. But they deal so much damage to current, and they deal, like, a surprising amount of damage to players, too, sometimes. I've actually died to Baron buff minions before, embarrassingly. <laughs> it's not the greatest feeling. Now, if uh, Morgan Kaiser has his ult up here, he should be fine, because Morgan Kaiser's ult, what he can do... Yep, right there, we see he just... Uh, we can't really see what it looks like from their screen, but basically he just takes the other player into a world all of his own where no one else can be around him. Really, really unfortunate cut down there on Mr. One-Shot. They got a thousand gold for that. Uh, Mr. Gunk really, uh, uh, really struggling hard to try and go for that uh, kill on the Fjord, but Fjord is able to dance away, and then the entire team collapsed in on him. Uh... Two really good shutdowns for the opposing team, but as you can tell, they're still down by 10k gold. Yeah, I mean, Wayne State definitely at the disadvantage here, but you got to give them props yeah. for being able to just sort of single the guys oh, out well. the way that they did. Yeah, uh, the, the most dangerous thing that for our team right now is just uh, getting caught by themselves without... Uh, uh, without their teammate around, just being clapped on by all five players. Right. Let's see, uh, I thought it was going to be a kind of small engagement, but no, this... I was going to say a small engagement in the middle, but no, that was kind of a pretty big engagement. All yeah. Things considered. And uh, it's a shame that the Eagle's not able to get at least one kill off of it because they got both yeah. guys down to critical health. And but all our guys are still healthy, and the dragon is about to come up. We're free to push forward and just set up for the dragon, just keep them from being able to really approach the dragon at all. Uh, Mr. One Shot looking like he, Yeah, Mr. One Shot just catching the Fura off or Airy. As the, is the name of the player. Uh, Mr. one Shot picking Aerie out there just all by himself and just completely destroying them. Uh, as good as Fiora is at getting away and being really hard to hit, uh, the character he's playing is even better. <laughs> has oh, and it looks like we're going to take Dragon here. Yeah, we're currently fighting for Dragon. Uh, Hecarim, their jungler, is really trying to 
do something do here. Do something. Try and steal it if you can. But our guys, and I don't know if Mr. Gunk has his... Yeah, okay, we got the dragon. That means we have dragon full now. Yep. Uh, and I, it also means we get a kill mm -hmm. with the guy who was trying to steal from us. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't sure if Mr. Gunk had his ult. If he had his ult, what he could have done is uh, use it on him and just guarantee that he wouldn't be able to do anything to his dragon. Because it just takes him out into a literally different realm, essentially. Uh -huh. Where it's just them, and they can't interact with anything else, essentially. Yeah, it helps to have somebody that's played Mordekaiser quite a bit. Yes. Uh, during the time where I was just playing a lot of top lane, uh, Morton Kaiser became probably one of my primary characters. Alright, so looks like Faulkner doing an approach here. Uh, getting pushed back a little bit by Aurelian Fold. Big area effect attack. Uh, Mr. One Shot have, has to be careful here. Has the entire opposing team right here. But he sees his team coming in, so he goes in to try and do what he can. Unfortunate shut down him, but he was able hey, to Hey, but he still ways. got a kill out of it. Got a and kill. Put some pretty serious damage Ooh. on that turret. Really unfortunate uh, there, though, because that uh, maybe j that just ended up being a really unfortunate battle for us. Uh, really, really unfortunate defeat there because they're not able to pick up any other kills there, and that really caught them up in gold. Uh, they're still 9k behind, but they were significantly more than that just a second ago. They right. I mean, that, like that was three, a pretty big swing gold. in their favor for sure. Mm -hmm. Now they're going to try to take this turret. And that, yeah, this is one of the things where it's going to be a really good catch up for them because now they're able to take a turret. That another 600 gold for the team, and now they're only eight. Uh, they're only three k behind, really. Nah, a little, a little more than that. I mean, less yeah. than that. But no, not three k. About seven. Seven, yeah. Little, little more than seven. Yeah. I don't know what math I was doing there for a moment. It's okay. It's late at night, so. <laughs> Yeah, I was telling the audience earlier, I just came off of a two-hour lecture <laughs> that I presented for my Old Testament theology class, so uh, I was real glad you showed up, because it gives my voice a break. <laughs> yeah, I just came from jazz band, so uh, luckily my voice still in good shape. It wasn't, a, wasn't my choir class. Yeah, I was about to say, good thing it wasn't choir, because then both of our voices would be pretty, pretty tired. Fiora getting another current there. Fiora just solo pushing the bot lane. We're kind of giving that up so that we can guarantee this Baron. Understandable. Uh, That's the right call. Mm -hmm. It's just one of those things where it's like we have to make a trade on something. And right now, it's better just try and guarantee this Baron. Because this is a 4v5 right now. Of course, we're a little wh whittled down by the Baron. But... Our guy should still be able to take this Baron, and I... Yep. Yep, we got it. Okay, got I was it. like, I wasn't sure, because Hecarim is their jungler, so he has Smite. So, if we don't have a guy with Smite in there, he can steal that out from under us really easy. But, nope, our guy got it. Yep, and take down the turret. And Mr. Winchat, yeah, just down there causing havoc. Right, well, the whole team was basically figuring that they needed the Baron to be able to get back in this thing, and so Mr. One-Shot taking advantage of that, just trusting that his four guys could take their five. Although, we have to be really careful. You got their whole team there. Mr. One-Shot. Man! Really good, uh, really, really good flash there, but not out of the woods yet. Aurelian Soul. And basically all of them, but Aurelian Pult especially has really strong approach. Yeah. Unfortunately, ended up within that, uh... Mr. Gunk has to be careful. There's a whole team. He can't fight them all. Now, he might be able to win this fight with the help of our guys, but he has to save the topical melody. Unfortunate miss. That's the big ult coming from Aurelian Pult. We have to... We, we can't be fighting them, uh, multiple... We can't be fighting them one to three this whole time. We have to we have to engage with the whole team there. We were kind of walking into a meat grinder there for a second. 
We're still right. pretty far ahead, but not as far ahead as we were. So we right, just they've have done to... a great job with the catch up. Like regardless mm -hmm. of whether we win or they win, you have to hand mm -hmm. it to Wayne State making a valiant effort here and not just giving up considering how far the exactly. behind they were at the beginning. We just have to stop bleeding here a little bit. Got to not necessarily play more carefully, but we just have to be careful with the fights we pick. Right, just be more on. selective. Yeah. When you're ahead, it's okay to be a little bit more conservatively minded. You don't want to take a lot of big risks and risk your lead. At the same time, you don't want to be too conservative and give them the chance to catch back up. Oh, that's certainly true. But looks like we're going to be, uh, looks like we're setting up for the Elder Dragon. Uh, yep. If we can, if we can guarantee this Elder Dragon, that's a really, really the, the Elder Dragon provides a really strong buff to the whole team. And there he is. And now this is a full. This is uh, let's see. This is a fight with a full team fight minus the top laners on both sides. Uh, right. Both top laners are just pushing lanes. Morning Kaiser pushing top lane, and Fiora is actually. Uh, giving up her push to just uh, teleport in, which really unfortunate loss for us, but hopefully Mornkaiser is essentially trying to backdoor them right now. If we can keep this push up, they're getting the Elder Dragon. Not much we can do about that. Really unfortunate, uh, really unfortunate buff there. We essentially need to wait out this dragon buff at this point right but he was able to get in there take out a few more currents we have to be really careful <laughs> they're they've almost caught up they're only seven kills behind and they only have uh, 2,000 less gold now right. as opposed to the over 10k lead we had what not five minutes ago Maybe. Maybe. More like it. Yeah, and this Might is something that's kind of characteristic that I've noticed watching Daniel play the past couple seasons. Uh, he really likes to just sort of plan out a long game. He doesn't like to go for a lot of quick stuff. Like, he really likes to very methodically, slowly take down his opponent. Mm -hmm. It's generally a significantly safer plan. But ha uh, at the same time, there are some. Uh, you have to be careful because the longer the game goes on, the more chances for mistake you give yourself. Mm -hmm. And we're starting to see the power of Aurelian Thol here, and that you know he's caught up in level, essentially to the rest of our team, and right. surpassed several of them. So in that situation, like if they were to get into a 5v5 team fight right now, should everybody just target him or do you take out some of the support and then go out? I, it really just depends on the, the positioning. Right. Uh, he's generally going to be standing in the back. He may not be able to get to him, so it just kind of depends. Uh, but let's see. Baron's going to be coming up soon. And right now, we really don't want to do a team fight because they still have the dragon buff. Right. So they've got a huge buff and will probably win a team fight. See, right there. Get out of there, go. Really, really good shutdown there. That was that was a big um, mm. pickup our team needed. Yep, definitely helped get things moving in the right direction. Ooh, if you notice the uh, <laughs> the longer this game goes on, the stronger Aurelian Thol gets. He's a he's a he's one you really have to watch out for. Baron Nash is up. We're setting up to try and take it. Yeah, but it looks like the other team uh, It seems like, it, yeah, we're probably not going to go for it right here. Just going to try and make the opponent think we are. So we're forcing one of them to come and try and check right here. And we're going to try and pick them off. 
really, really strong. Nice. Uh, really, really smart move there on our team. We uh, forced them to come try and check to see if we were taking Baron Nasher and just picked off the first person who came up. Didn't go on it until we knew we could pick off one of their teams. Uh, right now, Hecarim really can't. He's going to try and contest it and steal it, but... Oh! Nice! Really, really close. We have to be careful. Aurelian Cold just came in. Uh, did we get that? Yeah, Actually, we did. Don't. Okay. We got the dragon. Uh, yeah, we did get Baron Nasher, but... Or, sorry, I, I don't know why I said dragon. Oh, yeah, Baron. you're good. It, it's close enough. Uh, but that was actually really close for a second. The Aurelian Soul coming in and using his ult and his E, I believe, which just dealt a ton of damage to our whole team. Because if you look, that the area of effect on that thing is huge. And what you might not know is that ability has an execute effect, meaning once you drop below a certain amount of HP, it just automatically kills. All right, so it looked like they were gonna make a push for the game there, but they decided to back off a little yeah. bit. Yeah, better to back off, heal, buy a few items. I'm sure we've got plenty of gold. Actually, can you hit tap real quick? Yeah. Uh, let's see. So we have Morgan Kaiser in top lane, uh, working on his last item. Um, our mid laner, Mr. One Shot, of course, is fully built. Uh, um, it's like if you notice, uh, the items are actually significantly more even uh, than you would think. With the their top laner has four items completed, uh, which is almost the same as ours. I think actually it is the same as ours. Ours just has his fifth item started. Yeah, in both item and level, these teams have suddenly got very even. And it just comes down to essentially at this point it's gonna be who can who can pick off certain characters better and who can team fight better. I will say uh, in the long run I think their team has the better uh, long long game with Aurelian Soul just single handling being easily one of the best in game champions well in the game. Uh, Mr. One Cut really having to make a retreat here. Trying to take out this Aurelian soul, but not really being able to catch up to him. Mr. Gunk really has to be careful. Oh. Oh. I don't know what happened there. Well, let's see. Uh, okay, and we're back online. Yep. But, uh, the screen is not auto moving, though. Oh, I got it. Uh, which, which oh, they're going it, for Elder Dragon. There again. should be a way for you to set the camera back to the moon. There we go. I got it. Awesome. Can we take. Uh, they got the dragon. Really unfortunate. We have to be careful here. Right now, our whole team is dead, but we should, uh, because we still have so many, uh, because we've been able to save our current, we uh, do have a lot more time to come back and spawn in before they do it. But if you notice, we're actually behind in gold for the first time all game. Ow. Yeah, I didn't pick up on that. As this game continues, the let's see, be really careful. The I I believe having the Elder Dragon actually applies an execute effect to everyone to some extent. If you notice that white line 
a Mordenkaiser's 8 B bar. So right. I believe that's the execution line for Scarf. Yeah, if he drops below that, he dies. Wow. Yeah. This is the uh, this is the problem with playing against Aurelian Soul if you let him get too stacked up. If you notice, he is doing so much damage and is able to control so much area. Really unfortunate here, but there that game. Yeah, really yeah. unfortunate loss there. We were we had we were able to have a, a really really strong lead, but in the end, things just kind of ended up spiraling out of control. Uh, they just got a few too many comebacks, and it eventually just led to them being able to claw their way back from the brink of death. And uh, yeah, that's just how games go sometimes. Yeah, uh, really a heartbreaker mm -hmm. there at the end. You hate to see, especially when Faulkner initially had such a substantial lead, just not being able to seal the deal there. You really hate to see that. However, mm -hmm. um, well, I say that. I was going to say we'll go ahead and dismiss here and uh, take a quick break and come back with the post game, but it looks like all the players have left. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> that's unfortunate. Um, all right, well, I guess in that case, Seth, just uh, what are some final thoughts on this? Maybe what are some of the things that the team could have done here to make a difference here in that last match? Um, in that last match, we had a really, really strong early game, but starting about the late mid-game, we just started getting caught out, uh, caught out of place really often. Their, their team started grouping a lot uh, and were able to just pick off certain key players like Mr. Gunk and Mr. One-Shot who had these huge bounties on, on them and were able to just slowly do that over time till they were able to catch up in gold. The, uh, and then at the very end when they were able to uh, grab those key uh, I'm trying to remember what it's called. Not encounters, but the dragons and the Baron Nasher. Yeah. Those were really, really strong buffs that they were able to Claw from the back and get them and steal them from our team. Did they get a Baron Nasher? I thought we got every Baron. Uh, I think they did get the final Baron. Oh, okay. I I know I that they got. The, I know they got the last two dragons, but I was mm -hmm. thinking they that we got all the Barons. But I guess maybe not. I may be wrong, but I think they did get the last Baron right gotcha. before the game ended. Um, and also that Aurelian Soul. He was uh really suppressed early game, but. He was just able to slowly stack up the that Stardust, which really it's really really hard to beat an Aurelian Soul once he gets to a certain point uh, in the late game. Right. Uh, really unfortunate loss, but really good showing from both teams. Yeah, and like I said, you know, back when we were leading pretty strongly, and I thought that they were gonna be able to win that second one pretty handedly. Uh, even then, I said you've got to respect the effort. And it turns out that the effort actually wound up paying off to the point that mm -hmm. they were able to snake that one away from us. Uh, but props to the Wayne State team for mm -hmm. sticking it in there and, you know, just hanging in there and not letting go. And props to them. They played an extremely good game, able to come mm -hmm. from behind. And as a uh, Faulkner, you hate to see them not be able to seal the deal there. Mm -hmm. But, you know, hopefully we'll learn from this and come mm -hmm. back and. We'll be able to get to see you play in yeah. the next couple games. Uh, yep. Thanks I to will. Zane oh, for filling in for you. Yeah. I'll be, I'll, luckily, I will be 100% uh, available for the next two games we have this week. So, yeah, and about that, in we'll go ahead and give you a quick update. Uh, we've got this Thursday, we're going to be League of Legends match versus Davenpar. All the other seasons are mm -hmm. done now, so it's just League of Legends games. Uh, so this Thursday at 6 p.m., that's going to be us versus Davenport, which, as I understand it, Davenport is really good. So really? we may be playing like the number one team in the league uh, this upcoming Thursday. So Our looking forward to, to that. Them. How good would that be to be able to, <laughs> to beat that team? If we lose against everyone else, we can say we beat the number one team. Right, exactly. 
So they would you, have to you go gotta go for the gold. And you remember else, that's but... what happened last year? I think we started out the season three straight losses. And then we wound up beating like the number <laughs> two team in the league. And then we just steamrolled the rest of the season and wound up going all the way to the championship game. So sometimes that happens. Yeah. I mean, obviously you don't want to start the season on two losses. Like that yeah. sucks. But just because we did that, because we did that last mm. season and still wound up going to the championship game. So hope is not lost. And then also we have on Friday night, we have our rescheduled game that originally was supposed to be last week, but it was spring break. So that's going to be against Kaiser. So at 6 p.m., back-to-back nights, we got 6 p.m. on Thursday against Davenport, 6 p.m. Friday against Kaiser. And so we got a lot of really good stuff coming up later in this week. Be sure to check that out. And then, of course, we've got more games the following week. League of Legends has a shorter season, so uh, we've just got a couple mm-hmm. weeks left in the season, and we'll be wrapping it up. But uh, really looking forward to the next game against Davenport, and mm-hmm. hopefully we can eke out a win there. That's going to be it for us this evening. Thank you so much for being with us. And uh, we will see you at 6 p.m. on Thursday. In the meantime, stay the course, friends. The preceding broadcast was an official presentation of Faulkner University. It may not be redistributed without the express written consent of the Faulkner University Athletic Department. Regitar USA High Res Arena is sponsored by Regitar USA. The national anthem was performed by the Faulkner University Chorus. If you would like to learn more about the Faulkner Esports program, visit our official website at FaulknerEagles.com or follow us on Discord, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and Instagram for all the latest news and events. Thank you for watching, and soar Eagles!